All righty. Welcome back to AWS On Air. Hello, happy reInvent. My name is Robbie Belson. I'm a senior developer advocate here at AWS, and I'm joined by one of my fantastic co hosts, Adrian. Want to say hello? Hey, folks. My name is Adrian San Miguel. I'm a principal partner enterprise architect here at AWS. And today we're going to be talking to one of my favorite teams that I have very selfishly done a ton of work with over the last couple of years to some of my partners. Gentlemen, would you like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, thank you. So I'm Joe Sinertia. I'm the senior product manager for our AWS AI chips, Inferential and Tranium. Hi everybody, my name is Scott Perry. I'm one of the solution architects on the Annapurna Machine Learning Accelerator team here at AWS. Uh, we're the team responsible for both Tranium and Inferentia and helping to onboard our customers' models and optimize them to run on our custom-built chips. First and foremost, huge congratulations on the launch, the general availability of Tranium 2. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It was an exciting launch. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the announcement for folks hearing about it for the first time. Yeah, so uh, we're really happy. Uh, we had pre-announced Tranium 2 last year, and this year we were happy to announce Tier 2 instances, which are now generally available uh, via capacity blocks. Uh, so these instances use our latest generation Tranium chips, which are much, much more higher power than our first generation of tier one instances, up to 4x higher performance. And uh, we're really excited about kind of the generative AI applications that these are going to be able to power. Yeah, I, I actually know the answer to this question, but it's going to come up in the chat anyway, so sorry, chat, if I preempt you, but please keep them coming in. Million dollar question that customers and partners always ask us, why design our own silicon? Yeah, no, it, it is really a great question. And I think, um, you know, one of the things is at AWS, we want to continue to innovate at a pace that, you know, our customers expect from us. Mm -hmm. And in the AI, ML, AI and ML space, we really see this uh, continued innovation that we need to keep up with. And um, just like we did for Graviton for general purpose computing, we wanted to bring that innovation to AI ML with our own silicon. And so that's inferential training. And, and really the fundamental reason when we think about why design our own chips are it allows us to deliver more performance at a lower cost and better power efficiency, which is really critical for these large AI workloads. And then when you think about some other parts of it, it allows us to innovate faster as well, right? When we have, we have control over the supply chain where we can bring on and develop these chips and servers at a, at a pace that uh, brings innovation faster, just like we did with tier and two instances in this launch now. Always accelerating the pace of innovation. That's what we want to see. And we want to hear from you in the chat how you're accelerating the pace of your own innovation through Costa, uh, rather from accelerated compute instances. Tell us in the chat. We'd love to hear your use cases. But I want to turn it over to how it's made. What can you yes. tell us behind the scenes of how Tranium 2 is actually made? Yes, yes. And, and you know, it's really exciting here. Actually, on the expo floor, we have one of our Tranium 2 servers. Uh, it's sitting behind me. And when you look at a Tranium 2 server, it's composed of 16 individual Tranium 2 chips. And then when you package all of that together, you have uh, a 20.8 petaflops of FP8 dense performance paired with uh, up to 1.5 terabits of HBM, which is high bandwidth memory. And that also has 46 terabits per second of high bandwidth memory bandwidth. All of those are key components and recipes that you need for your generative AI models. And so packaging all of that together, we've connected those with our neuron link uh, interconnect, interchip interconnect, which is one point or one terab terabyte per second connection in the server itself. Byte? Terabyte. One terabyte. <laughs> yeah. And and then I'll bear that out. So that's the server. It's connected with 3,200 GBPS of networking EFA performance. So you can put these in a large ultra cluster and really scale out to get that scale out performance that you need. I mean, my inner data center nerd was awakened when I went back there and did the you know mandatory selfie and I had a partner go out there with me also. I mean, just physically looking at the cluster, it's so imposing, it's so well put together, but also just thinking back to my early days in the data center, my formative years as I like to say, uh, racking and stacking, boatloads of servers across a row. It's like, all right, cool, now we have 100 gigabit. But to see that much in such a small form factor, that it just blows my mind. My 21-year-old version of myself couldn't even comprehend that. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, as these models scale, and, you know, I think we'll talk a little bit about the use cases here and mm -hmm. actually show a demo on this, um, but it's absolutely critical that you're able to pair all of these, all these hardware components closely coupled together to deliver the performance customers want. Well, we talked by the numbers and we want to get into the use cases, but maybe we segment this into two components, the like technical use cases, how would customers use this for training, then like the industry use cases, what types of models or specific industry use cases you might see. Yeah, yeah, so it's great. So 
Um, kind of from the technical use cases perspective, what we're looking at is what tier two instances are designed to support up to a trillion parameter generative AI models. So we're looking at large language with a T. With the T, trillion. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. So so for reference, right, um, Llama, Llama 3.1 or 3.1405B, one of the largest open source models, runs beautifully on Trinium 2 instance or Tier 2 instances. Um, and you know, we actually published in Peter's keynote as a reference, one of the benchmarks that was where we have now for Llama 405B running on Tier 2. And it delivers the fastest total response time out of all of the different endpoints for Llama 405B has published uh, on artificial analysis. Yeah. When I saw, I, I was working the, the keynote, you know, sitting in the back um, doing moderation for the chat, I actually was wearing my glasses, took them off, I was like, what? Like, I, I had to fact check myself and what I was hearing in real time because it, it just sounds so crazy. And diving deep into, into the tech report, it's just, it's befuddling how fast and how performant these machines are. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it doesn't stop there. Right? You you heard on you know some of the keynotes were partnerships with Anthropic. Um, you know, Anthropic is already testing on on Tier N two instances, and they had mentioned as well they're seeing sixty percent better performance on their on Tier N two over comparable instances. And uh, you know they're really excited, and we're really excited about that partnership with them to continue to expand and, and improve the performance of Tier N two instances. So as we start to think about bringing the pieces together here, you've got Tranium 2 instances, and then another super exciting announcement was all about ultra servers. How do the two yes. relate? Yeah, no, it, it's a great question. So so I mentioned those 16 chips locked into in a single server. Well, those 16 chips have that one terabit per second yep. connection between them. Well, with an ultra server, we're extending that to 64 chips. So now you have 64 chips with that one point, it's actually a 1.3 terabytes per second connectivity across all 64 chips. So what you can do is you can take those one trillion and go even further. So now you have the ability to explore novel, novel uh, parallelism techniques on the actual ultra server to really advance the state of frontier model development. Wow. I mean I know it even sounds silly, but I would love to see anything that can help sh hi uh, highlight and showcase what, what we're talking about, because it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to actually see it and experience. And I know I'm, I'm resisting the urge in the back of my mind to make a joke about, hey, can it actually run SharePoint without it bogging down? Or even for us, Chime, without getting chimed and having the window crash. I mean, it, it the applications here are really limitless, so we'd be very excited to see whatever you have to show us. It, I guess to see it in action. Yeah, yeah, and we're super excited. So, you know, uh, we have, like I said, tier two instances generally available on capacity blocks. And I think Scott here is going to walk us through how you would uh, get access to tier N2. For sure. Thanks, Joe. Um, so as Joe mentioned, uh -huh. for tier N2, uh, th there's quite high demand already. Okay. So we're actually using EC2 capacity blocks to allow customers to reserve these in advance. Okay. Uh, and we just wanted to walk customers through what would that look like. Everybody's familiar with the AWS console, obviously. Yep. But he So here I am in the EC2 console. If you're excited about training two, you want to give it a try, you start off, you hop into EC2. On the left-hand side, you're going to see capacity reservations. So you want to click right there. Okay. And scrolling down, you'll see that we actually have two different... Oh, sure. Yeah, get a quick zoom. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. And mm -hmm. you can see here we actually have two types of capacity reservations. The on-demand on demand capacity reservations have been around for a while, but for tier N2, we're actually using capacity blocks. Right, so Joe, did you want to yeah, quickly yeah, comment? So so it's really important to understand why we why release capacity box. So this is a, a new hoteling type of capability where you get access to a cluster, a, a cluster of up to 64 instances in one of our ultra cluster fabrics. Wow. So now you have almost instantaneous access to a scale out training cluster uh, with some of the most performant compute available on the market. So yeah. when you say hoteling, you're, res you're making a reservation from X to Y date. That's right, yeah. yeah. And, and I think Scott will click in here, um, but it's important to see that you're choosing the amount of number of instances you want and the duration that you want them for. Yeah, that's super, super important. Get what you need the second you need it, and when you don't, you're done. Pick purchase capacity blocks for ML. Mm -hmm. We'll get started, and you can see right away you get to choose the instance <laughs> type, right? So here we're right. going to not choose GPU. We're going to hop over to tier N 248XL. <laughs> uh, for platform, you have a variety of, of options to choose. We're just going to leave that at Linux for now. Okay. We typically use Ubuntu. Uh, and here's where we get into the meat of it. So now you get to choose your capacity and how long you want to reserve these monster instances. So here, you can see we can choose up to 64. Let's go with that. We're pretty excited. And for days, why not 
182 days just to, Max to it push, the lim- push the limit. Why not? <laughs> reserve, reserve it all. <laughs> I mean, why not, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So at this point, you could also choose the date that you want to look for a, a capacity block starting from, right? Oh. So here, let's search from today. And when you're ready to go, you would click find capacity block. Mm-hmm. It's as simple as that. Um, from there on, you know, I won't click find capacity block. I'm not going to purchase one here on the air, but you would be actually shown um, an, a list of available capacity blocks and, and offers that would allow you to purchase them. Oh, so you could effectively plan efficiently and say, hey, I know over this weekend, say it's a maintenance window, we're going to go and do our modeling or do our fine tuning from the X duration and effectively set your bounds, almost like doing the airline thing where you're trying to redeem points and say, here, exactly. I'm going to go year to year. Yep. That, that's pretty snazzy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we're really excited about you know opening this access more broadly. I think it just makes it really ac- easy for our customers now to access co-located Tranium 2 instances when they need them. So, yeah. so you reserve your capacity block through the EC2 console you know and love, then what? Okay, yeah. we're going to show you uh, a little bit of you know the, the Neuron documentation in a sec, but I wanted to hop right into the actual demo and show you okay. some Tranium 2 in action, if that's okay. Yes, please. Okay. So if you were part of the expo booth here, you might have seen this demo actually at the booth. Um, so in prep for reInvent, we actually built out a nice little demo that compares Tranium 1, which we're very fond of. It has great performance with Tranium 2, right, the latest generation. Yeah. Um, so what we've done here, we've got two options. We're going to show you a generative text demo, which will actually use two Llama models side by side and show you the relative performance between Tranium 1 and Tranium 2. And then we'll do an image generation using PixArt as well. Hey, Scott, while you're getting this going, um, somebody did ask me earlier, of what are we going to do with Tranium, Tranium 1, now that Tranium 2 is there. And I li- really like the way that you phrased it. Use the right tool for the job. Use the appropriate one. We know and love it. But sometimes you might need something with a little more oomph. That's exactly. Right. Yep. Yeah. 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 And Tranium 1 will still be around for a long time to come. Yeah. Definitely. Deal. Okay. So we're looking at the generative text demo here. Um, we've got a number of, you know, pre-canned prompts for you. I'm just going to pick, you know, we'll start a debate over the pros and cons of candy <laughs> between Julius Caesar and, and Mary Curie. So, that is oddly specific. Okay, and this is a live demo, so I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes here. <laughs> okay, so on the right-hand side, Tranium 2 running a 405 billion parameter Llama model. On the left-hand side, the previous generation Tranium 1 running a 70 billion parameter model. And what wow. you can hopefully see from the demo <laughs> here is that despite the difference in model size, Tranium 2 is still vastly outperforming uh, training one in terms of the the token generation here yeah and i mean we, we could have gone with 70 billion parameter on both sides and really made it scream but we wanted to be able to show you we, we can host these very large models this is 450 405 billion parameters i mean that's that's pretty impressive um and if yeah. we go to the image demo here so here we're going to do something similar we're, we're going to use a, a recent pixart sigma 1024 model and we're going to generate an image on both Tranium 1 and Tranium 2 and, and see the difference in the, the response time here. Okay, so we're going to gen- generate a, an image of a peacock standing in front of a burn. I click Submit. How did you come up with that prompt? <laughs> they must have seen my dad walking yes, around sleeveless with his ornate peacock tattoo on his arm. <laughs> okay, so within three seconds, okay. we get the 1024 by 1024 yeah. image. Tranium 1, still working. And to be clear, that is much higher quality and professionalism than compared to that awful thing on my dad's shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if we zoom in, I mean, a, a beautiful image, right? This yeah. is straight wow. off the of Tranium 2. And that was near instantaneous. Like, take a sip of your coffee and it's done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pretty fast. So, yeah, you can see here, if you look at the bottom, the latency on Tranium 2 for this 1024 by 1024 generation, three seconds, pretty mm-hmm. good. Um, and in Tranium 1, 8.54. So, so definitely we're seeing that drastic improvement in performance going from the, the first generation to the second. I mean, go for it. Oh, no, I was going to say, and, and I think, you know, I mentioned the 4X performance. I think, you know, one of the key parts when we look at the actual chip architecture is we added more cores, right? So it's just this compute and HBM that we talked about earlier is so critical for generating this content here and making that performance gains. Yeah, I mean, I think it might be, what do you think? bit of a curveball open up to the chat see what we get some suggestions yeah to get put let's, together. Let's, let's see what the chat wants all right chat you we're at your mercy this is your chance take advantage and while we're doing that you can you can generate images of peacocks but you can also it sounds like amazon.com is using 
Trinium too. You want to tell us a little bit yes, about that? Yes. No. And and you know our AWS uh, AI chips have been powering innovation at Amazon for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so you know starting with Alexa using Inf1 and their for their text to speech, all the way through to the recent announcement where we had Rufus with the AI shopping assistant. It's running on over eighty thousand Trinium and Inferentia chips for the for the largest ever Prime Day. Is that what's powering Rufus? Because when I was playing with Rufus the other day, asking some some very very specific questions about color and texture, it was actually pretty quick and it actually saved me from buying the wrong type of shoes. Yes, yes, it's a behind behind the scenes. We've been working closely with that team. Wow. And, yeah. Awesome, it looks like the chat has chimed in. They want to see a image of an ogre sleeping on a couch. And I think we have a little creative license there on color, texture, what have you. So let's see, let's see what we got. I'll just say, uh, ogre sleeping, sleeping on a couch. Yeah. Typos and all. Okay. Let's give it a go. All right. Let's see. model get creative. Let's see, is it really live? <laughs> we'll do it live. Uh, wow. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Also, incidentally, looks like my dad sleeping <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> and there you go. Again, the timing pretty close yeah. to before. Yeah, that yeah. is that is pretty fantastic. I mean, at this point, you're really only at mercy of your imagination when you're doing some, something like this. But this is just, you know, kind of goofing off. Being able to put multimodal, uh, multimodal workloads in through this, being able to effectively fine-tune down to the nth degree your models. It, the world is really your oyster is kind of what we're getting at. And I got, I've got to say, we've been here for pretty close to just under nine years at this point. Um, this is among the most impressive of launches and hardware bits that I've ever seen. And you gentlemen absolutely deserve your flowers. You've done a fantastic job here. <laughs> Thanks. We're all pretty Thanks. excited. Maybe one final question here as we go around the horn to the two of you. What do you want to hear from customers in the developer community as they try this out over the coming months? Mm -hmm. Starting with you, Scott. Uh, well, we actually launched the Nikki kernel interface recently. And for those who aren't familiar, this is a, a lower level uh, Triton-like API that allows you to, to really take advantage of, of the hardware at the lowest level. So instead of just, say, coding at the PyTorch level, mm -hmm. you can actually get that fundamental really low level control of the hardware. And we're excited about this because we're expecting that you know, people will be able to implement their own operators for their own models and hopefully contribute them back to the community. Mm -hmm. So right, instead of being beholden to our team to basically implement new models or, or, or support new operators, the community is going to be enabled to do that themselves. So we'd really like to, to basically see some engagement there and let us know, you know what's working, what's not working, so that we can, we can tackle that and make it even easier to, to develop on uh, Neuron. Yeah, yeah, and, and I agree. I think you know we're we're really excited about what Neuron SDK can do now, and and the model support. I think, um, in general, uh, for from my perspective, you know what we're looking for is how we evolve uh, our both our capacity box solution, but also our hardware over time, right? So we already announced Trinium three chips, and I think mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we're looking to see what our customers are doing next, right? So we have a lot of transformer-based architectures. Mm -hmm. um, we want to learn, you know, how are they using these innovations, one, and then how are they thinking about innovation in the future and what they're innovating so we can continue to collaborate with them and innovate better. All right, chat, everyone, we're right at time, but also it sounds like balls in your court. Let us know what you're going to be doing, building, and helping make better overall. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.